Hi friends, uh, welcome back to my channel. So in my last video, we have seen what is W3C actions uh, and how many different type of gestures we can create by using W3C actions. So in today's video, we'll be looking uh, in one such gesture, which is a tap gesture. Uh, we'll see how we can tap on a particular element uh, using the coordinates. So we'll try to, we'll find the coordinates uh, of the element and we'll click in the center of the element. If you are new to my channel, uh, my name is Vasip Bamla. I have uh, uh, more than 16 plus years of experience in, uh, te in the testing field. On this channel, I post videos related to testing, test automation, and tips and tricks related to test aut automation. Do subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon to get notified when our new video is uh, posted on this channel. So let's uh, jump into the topic for today. <laughs> This is the sample project uh, which I have created and this is the tab gesture which we will be looking into. There are uh, the first step uh, while uh, performing the tab gesture is to identify the center of the element. So we have an element which we will be uh, tapping on. So first we will identify the center of the element. So let's uh, check out what uh, we do in, the, in this method to get the center of the element. So first, uh, we will uh, get the location of the element. So it will uh, give the coordinates x and y coordinates uh, on on the screen where uh, exactly this element is. So this coordinates represents the top left corner of the element. Second, we will uh, identify the size of the element. So this is required to get the center point of from the uh, on the screen for the particular element. So this will give the width and height of the element. We will use this width and height to get the center by doing uh, size dot get width divided by two, and similarly size dot get height divided by two. So this will return us uh, a center position uh, on that element. But uh, we also need to add the location. So this will uh, represent the exact uh, coordinates of the center of the element. So we'll be saving this uh, values in the x and y variable, which will represent the coordinates of the center of element. So now we'll be creating a new point using those coordinates. And we will first also do a correction of the coordinates. So we don't want the uh, these new coordinates to be outside the bounds of the screen. So this uh, method will just uh, make sure that we are inside the screen bounds. So let's see what this method does. So in this method, we will get the screen size, uh, the exact screen size, uh, like width and height of the screen. And we'll get the point which we have uh, we passed to this method. So we'll get the x and y coordinates and the width and height of the screen. Now, if uh, we have any element assigned, so in this case, we have some element. So we will make sure that we are inside the bounds of that element. Okay. If this element is not provided, it is assumed that we are just checking the coordinates specific to the screen and we are checking that we are inside the screen bounds. But if the element is provided, we will check that we are inside the elements bound. Okay. So we should be inside the boundary of that element. So we will just update the width and height uh, of the element by using the elements uh, width and height. And we here also we will need to make sure that we are uh, adding the location. So that make that will make sure that we are getting the proper coordinates and lastly we will just uh, put some conditions to make sure that uh, this if it is greater than or equal to width means uh, we need to uh, reduce the width by 5 and uh, we'll up assign it to x and uh, we'll also check uh, that y coordinates is also will be less than uh, height if it is greater than or equal to height we'll reduce the height by 5 pixels and we'll assign that to y coordinates and similarly, if we will check whether the x is uh, greater than or equal to 0, if it is less than 0, then we will assign the value as 5. Similarly, for y coordinates. So the reason we are uh, using 5 pixel as a difference over here is that in case if the element coordinate is uh, touching the border of the screen, then in, in, in that case, uh, the exact uh, border of pixels will not work uh, for swipe, means it will not work at all. So in that case, we have to keep some difference from the borders. So that's why we are using this uh, phi as a difference variable over here. So now coming back to this uh, tap gesture. 
so we now have the starting coordinates so this is this will now represent the center exactly the center uh, coordinates of the element now we'll use this center coordinates and we'll pass that coordinates to this uh, another method which is a single finger gest swipe gesture so this is a common method which uh, is used uh, for all the different gestures and uh, this is uh, for only for one single finger so we are passing the finger one which is nothing but the finger name that is finger one so we are passing this finger one gesture and this is the index uh, that is not uh, important here and the last thing is we are not passing any end coordinates we passing null because we don't want to swipe we just want to tap on that element. so that's why we will be just using the start coordinates let's see what we have done in this single finger swipe method so here we are composing a swipe gesture and basically swipe gesture is not these are nothing but the w3c action sequence so first we have to identify the pointer input pointer input is nothing but the input source in this case pointer input represents the mouse pointer and uh, the kind of mouse pointer is the touch so touch is equivalent to a finger touch okay and we are just passing the finger name the finger name which we have passed to this particular method as a parameter we are assigning that value and we are creating the finger in instance of that pointer input and in we are just next creating a sequence sequence is a class uh, which is created which is provided by selenium and uh, in your over here we are passing the finger uh, instance and the index index uh, in, normally we, we can keep it as a zero that is uh, that's fine uh, now we will compose the uh, action sequences uh, using this sequence uh, instance so over here we will do add add actions so first we will add action of create pointer move so first we need to move to that starting position so first what we will do we will uh, create a pointer move gesture which will uh, take 0 milliseconds and it will immediately move to the starting coordinates on the viewport okay so on we should move in only in the viewport we we, can, we should not um, try to uh, move to a position which is outside the bounds of the viewport so we will uh, move to the starting position of the viewport second action what we will do we will do a pointer down so we will press on the pointer down the pointer of the left button of the mouse so we will just point uh, press down on the button on left button and here since we are not passing any end coordinate so we will, it will not go inside this uh, if condition and the last action is uh, simply pointer up so immediately when we do pointer down next step is directly we are doing pointer up so means we are tapping on the element so we will be using the left key only for both pointer down and pointer up so this way it will it will just uh, do a pointer down and pointer up on the starting coordinates which we have provided to this method and we are returning that particular sequence sequence once uh, it is being uh, composed it will be returned and in the tap uh, method we will use driver.perform and we will create a singleton list of that sequence okay so the perform method is uh, requiring a collection of sequence so we need to create a singleton list uh, and we will pass that to the perform method so once this uh, perform gets executed the all the actions which we have composed in the sequence will get executed as in the same order let's uh, execute the android test and see the tap gestures in uh, action so whatever tap uh, will happen in this uh, test uh, it is being done using this tap method which we are seeing we'll uh, first uh, see in the android uh, i'll execute this android test and whatever uh, clicks which happens on this test, uh, it is being done uh, using the tap uh, method which we have seen just now. So this is it for today's video about tap action. Uh, in the next video of this series, uh, we will look into the swipe action and uh, we'll see how we can do different types of swipe. For example, a left swipe up or down, and right so we'll see how we can implement the swipe uh, for all these four directions if you like this video uh, do click on the thumbs up uh, button uh, and uh, share this video with your friends and uh, share uh, also share your thoughts uh, and feedbacks uh, in the comment section below it would be nice to hear from you uh, what you think about the video and the content which i'm creating you can check out the last video over here uh, which, is, which is related to w3cx
Thanks for watching. Uh, I'll see you in the next video.